Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 15 of Objective C on the Mac. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how to use convenience initializers in Objective C. So in the previous tutorial, we are I showed you how to override the NS object init method, which allows you to initialize your instance variables in your class. So for example, uh, and if you haven't watched the previous tutorial, make sure you check that out before continuing with this one. Um, so uh, in this, we in our init method that we uh, were overriding, we are setting the height to a value of 6 and our width to a value of 4. So that's what we did in our init method. But the only problem with this is that it only creates a rectangle with a height of 6 and a width of 4. I mean, I guess it's better than having a 0 and a 0 in there, but um, at least now that we have a height, we actually have a height and we actually have a width. However, we don't necessarily have the height that we want or the width that we want because uh, chances are we're going to want to have a rectangle that is initialized with a different value. Um, maybe give it a height of 20 and a width of 10. So these are the kind of things that we want to be able to do in our class without having to set or use our setter methods later on to initialize our object. So um, let's just uh, go through the normal process of uh, first creating the object. So again, I have my import of the rectangle.h class that I've been using for most of these tutorials now. And now uh, we're just going to set up the normal class or object setup that we usually do. And so there's a normal init method, and we're just going to print out this object to make sure everything's working uh, for now. Build and run, and everything's fine. And as you can see, we return 6 and width of 4. Height and 6, width of 4. So that's uh, great, but sometimes, of course, we want to have some different values. So the nice thing about the init method is that it's nothing really special. It's just simply a method that's called init, and it returns an object. Uh, we could technically call this whatever the heck we want. We don't even have to call it init. However, init is just, by convention, um, what initializers are called. So that's what we use. So what we can do now is we can make some new methods, and that allows us to, uh, of course, create parameters with those methods. So we could have something called init with height, for example, and it takes a parameter of uh, height or an integer of height. We could have init with height colon width, which takes two parameters, a height and a width. So as you can see, we can have a bunch of init methods that do different things. So that's what we're going to get into in this tutorial. So let's jump over to our at interface portion of our rectangle class and of course we have to set up these init methods because we don't have any uh, public reference to them so if they're not in our at interface our main program isn't going to be able to recognize that they're there because they're not uh, viewable to the public basically so uh, we're going to just create our normal um, the thing that we do in our at interface all the time just create our method names and the parameters that go with them so we want to have init with height, and it's going to take one parameter, and it's going to be uh, just called h for height. The next method is just going to be init with width, and it's going to take in w as its parameter, which will just be the width. And our last one is just init with height, colon, int, and h. And then next parameter will be width. Oops, wrong. And it's going to be an integer. Just call it w. So now we have three different uh, init methods that we can call, or four in total, technically, if you're including the init method. We have init with height, which has a parameter for its height, init with width, which has a parameter for width, and init with height colon width, which has um, an h and a w for uh, the height and width parameters. So now let's save this and head over to our at interface, so where we can actually, or sorry, not at interface, our at implementation, where we can implement these classes. So now we want to start with uh, what's known as the designated initializer. And so usually in these classes, you want to look for what has the most parameters. What init method do you have that has the most parameters? And of course, in our case, it's init with height colon width, because that has the height and the width, and it initializes all of our uh, different um, instance variables. So this is going to be known as our designated initializer, 
and it's basically the one that all of our other initializers can call to get their work done. And you'll see how this works uh, in a second. But let's just let's just fill out this uh, our init method that we want to make here. So this is our uh, full parameter one. It's in it with height width colon width. And now we're just going to do the normal thing that an init method would do. So it checks to make sure uh, self gets super in it. And so basically it's going to call the uh, super methods, or sorry, super classes in it methods, or the super classes in it method. Um, and whatever it returns, it will return to self, and self will get that. If it's nil, it's not going to run the if statement. If it uh, has reference to an object, then it is going to run. And so now we're going to say, uh, well, okay, that's great. Now we're going to assign our height a value of h, which is what we're going to pass in parameters, and we're going to assign our width a value of w, which is going to be what we also pass in parameters for width. So now we can return our self, of course, so that we can return this object. Well, and now we can create our object when we call this method. So we're returning the object, and uh, we do all the important stuff that the init methods have to do. They call the super in, uh, sup the initialize super classes initializers, and um, it re returns that information to our s class that we're in right now, and then it assigns what it needs to. So let's try this init with height colon width method out in our class. So now we're just going to scrap out this init method and change it, or uh, we're just going to make it our init width, height, and width. So now our height, we're going to pass in a value of 20, and width, we're going to just pass in a value of 10. And when we go to uh, print or run this, uh, it's going to give us some build errors just because we haven't uh, fully implemented our classes yet, but uh, that'll change when we are done with the other init methods. But anyway, uh, this does build and run anyway because uh, it works legally. So we have init with height, which uh, sends the value of 20 to our rectangle.h, or sorry, not that. It sends it to the init with height, and init with height takes that h parameter, signs it to height, and our width parameter takes the 10 and assigns it to our, uh, our width with the w parameter that we passed in. So now that that's all done, as you can see, again, we are assigning our height and width. So when we print out these values, we should have our rectangle class show a height of 20 and width of 10. So that all worked. Now let's go back and implement our uh, the important stuff that I, what we want to learn about these init methods. So now that we have our designated initializer, we can scrap all of the calls to super init. Because we have, if we make reference to this init method, we um, don't have to call the super init in our other init classes or init methods. So let's uh, see how this works. So um, after all that confusion there, uh, we're just going to do something very simple. And basically, all of our init, other init methods can become very simple now because we're going to just call this init method, which can do everything since it has all the parameters necessary. So self we'll get our, uh, sorry, self init with height, and we're going to pass in uh, just a 20 for that, I guess, and width will be 10, and there you can go. Uh, we are, What we're doing now is we're just calling um, a class, which is our self, so this, or this method, sorry, is inside of our uh, class that we're in right now, which is our rectangle class, so it's going to call the init with height method and uh, or in it with height colon width and so it'll pass in these parameters and so now when it calls this method it will do everything in this method return the object and now self gets the self here and we return self so basically that's all great and now we can check to um, or we can finish up with all of our other initializers as well so uh, we have ID in it with height, and let's change just to the normal one because we already have implemented our in it with height colon width method. So now again, we're just going to say self gets um, call method self in it with height colon width, 
and we're going to pass in, since we take h in parameters, we're just going to pass in the h, and width isn't taken in, so we're just going to make a default value for it. And then, of course, we return self. So now we just do our finish up with our last method in it with width. And now we do the same thing. Self is going to get calling the method self inside self in it with width. And nope, that's right, that's wrong. In it with height uh, colon width. And now we're just going to pass in a value of 20 for our height, and our width is going to get a value of w since that's what we pass in parameters. So it's going to call again the init with height method, and init with height is going to do all the necessary initializations. And of course we return, oops, return, I wish I could spell, return self. And there we go, we've done every important initialization that we need. So let's try this out. Let's try our init with, uh, let's just try our init method since we changed that up. So now we have our init method below, and it calls the init with height colon width method, and init with height colon width is going to do all of the necessary initializations that we need. So let's see this run in action. It's going to build and run, no problems there. And as you can see, we get a value of 20 and a width of 10. So that's basically how convenience initializers work. We can set up our own init, uh, init methods in our at interface, then we just implement them, we find our designated initializer, which isn't always necessary, but it helps uh, later on when you subclass stuff, but that's not that important. But in essence, you want to have a designated initializer, it just makes code for your other init methods a little easier, and we can have as many init methods as we want, and they don't uh, have to be called init. So the important part here is that we can take in parameters, we can assign this rectangle object, different values that we want as we go through the program. So that's uh, basically what this tutorial was for today, and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them on the channel page or in the comments below, or you can even send me a message. And I also have a Twitter account, which is app, at AppleProg, or P-R-O-G for the ending there, Apple P-R-O-G. And if you have any questions or you want updates, you can uh, follow me there. And that's about it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and stay tuned because more tutorials are on the way.